I enter the path of male experience. Welcome to the Pat Mayo Experience, presented by DraftKings, quarterback market, NFL, free agency. What's Lamar going to do? He's been non-exclusive franchise tag. we got quarterbacks signing everywhere to a ton of money, but the problem is they're not any good. And then you have Aaron Rodgers. What's he going to do? We don't know as of right now. Is he going to go to the store and stay with the Green Bay Packers? I don't know. Is he going to go to the New York Jets? Maybe. That's a possibility that's out in the ether right now. So a reminder to smash the like button for the episode, sub to Mayo Media Network, and please, down in the comment section, you give me what you think the Jets record is going to be if Aaron Rodgers is their starting quarterback. Gary and Thorne, what do you think the record would be if he was their starting quarterback? I mean, probably 18 and 0. And you're going to say, how do they go 18 and 0? There's only 17 games. I think the league, I think Park Avenue, would give them an extra win for style points because not only would they be undefeated, but the ratings that it would bring in Aaron Rodgers on the New York Jets. I mean, they just, they just have to give him the bonus win. I, I think that's how that would go. I, I I'm with you. I mean, maybe even 19 and oh, one more to go. As I remember, there was a song at one point in time, but realistically, what I want to do here is talk through this entire carousel, but I need to get the official record. I wanted it from you. I want it from the people out there and I need it from one Mr. Tim Undergust. Tim Undergust. It's not my name. Secondly, I'm not going to give a record when I don't know the schedule. That'd be crazy. I don't know which various ways the league is trying to help or screw us based on how the schedule lines up. For example, last year, we had to play on two separate occasions, teams coming back to back off mini buys. Four times we played teams coming off mini buys. Uh, and that doesn't even include like having to play a team who got to play in London and got finished earlier than we did earlier that week. Too. Like there's a lot you can't. The devil, as always, is in the details. And so I'm not going to stand here and proclaim and palaver about with a record until I actually know what the schedule looks like. I'm not going to get too excited. I refuse to get too excited. I will get excited, but not too excited. What would you say their percentage chance to win the Super Bowl is with Aaron Rodgers? I told you that I think they have a slightly better than 50% chance if they get Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> okay. Cool. Gary, would you agree that they should be minus 105 to win the Super Bowl? Yeah, I mean, definitely. I mean, they're not going to be. Um, no, they'll, they, they'll have a 7% or 8% chance based on the implied odds that they'll be available at. So but you think, think that it's like the best? I mean, if that's if you have it capped one way of at least 50% or at least 51% and the implied odds are going to be like 7 8%. Does that make it the greatest bet in the history of bets? Well, if I was gigabyte and I could run it through my computers to come up with that number, but I, mine is purely based on my heart and not based on advanced analytics. Uh -huh. But you have a very I big, would say uh, you, you, if you could find as an HGH abuser, your heart is like three times the size. The bigger, the better, right? Exactly. I mean, if you can find odds that stilted in a direction and you honestly believe it, I think you just put a big lump sum of money on the new york jets and not only do you win a super bowl but you might get that nice heated driveway well we had a bunch of snow here last week and i tell you having a heated driveway would have been perfection for a lot of people if they had had it it would have made life a lot easier uh so that would be a nice payoff but, from a super bowl but honestly I, i'm going to have so much emotion and and um, everything on the line already in terms of my heart and soul that I don't need to put any more money on it. But didn't we describe to you that the heated driveways really would not have worked all that well? I just, I even told you that it might have actually been a detriment this week. Yeah, well, I'm glad so, to see that you've now so changed your position. Snow. You've now changed your position on the show from, oh, well, I would never say I wouldn't want a heated driveway. I just think it's too expensive to now, oh, they're they're garbage and no one should have one. I mean, I did, Gary, and did you hear any of those words come out of my mouth? No, you gave no. a very specific circumstance. Um, you know, it was sort of well thought out and reasoned. Yeah. Uh, I could see how he maybe had trouble interpreting that sort of logic. You just um, crank it up. It, it right. can only get so hot. You realize that. If you can crank it up as hot as you want it if you get it set to the way oh. you want it. Yes, yeah. heated driveway goes to 11. 
Why not? Why couldn't you have it come to any temperature that you wanted it to come to? Because that's not how they work, Tim. But you just say, I want mine to be able to go up to whatever temperature I need. I want it up to 26 degrees. Sure, even if you get, you could probably get up to 30 degrees Celsius if you wanted to. But see, here's the, here's the issue, Gary, because everything came down and I ended up with like two feet of snow on my driveway. Uh, being at the very top of a hill, it was terrible. So I had gone out and shoveled it the night before, like the like there'd been probably you know, six inches down at that point. So I went out and put all like this. It's not salt. It's like it's blue, but it, it does the same trick as salt. Yeah. So it just, yeah. I wanted to make sure that ice didn't pile up underneath and make everything like really horrible. So I did that and I went out and I, I threw all the salt after I shoveled the driveway that night, came out in the morning. I was like, oh, perfect. This is going to be super easy. The problem was the ice the salt had melted the snow at the bottom, which is great because it wasn't ice, but it just made the snow super heavy to shovel. And yeah. I feel like if you had too much snow, that's what would happen with the heated driveway. There'd be less snow for sure, but it wouldn't be able to melt all of that snow over that short of a period of time. So then you would have to go outside and shovel the snow. And once you shovel the snow, it'd be like, it'd be like freezing rain when it was out there. You know how heavy snow can get when it gets wet. I mean, again, <laughs> I'm sure this was brought up at some point over the numerous times you've talked about this on camera with Tim. It would be less expensive and probably better to just hire a snow removal service that would come to your house and do it for you. I there, There's so many different ways to go here. And we found out the reasoning of why Tim was into heated driveways, too. Okay. He was going to get his grandma, which is very nice, a heated mm. driveway as a gift. Hmm. So he thought it was affordable initially. Yes. How much did you think a heated driveway was, Tim? Like a thousand dollars max. Okay. I mean, it lines up with every other house estimate I've hear I've heard you made make the past couple months. So, sure. Yeah, I believe it. What are the Jets prepared to give up for Aaron Rodgers? I mean, I suspect they'll probably give up a second round pick. And then conditional picks based on how many years he plays in performance. Um, I don't think anybody is out there offering any firsts. I don't think that's really on the table. Uh, so I think it'll be a second round pick that could even be conditional, that could become a first based on performance. And then an additional conditional picks based on does he play in 2024 or 2025. I think that's the best the Packers can get. And it seems like the Packers are going to take the best, whatever they can get. If he wants to go to the Jets, seems like they're just going to trade him. If he wants to stay in Green Bay, they'll just keep him. They're just going to do whatever he wants, it seems like. They're just done with him. They kind of don't care. I, I don't think they would accept a second-round pick in return. I think they'd just keep him. I don't think, no. But they've already said if he wants to go, they're only going to send him. They're not going to keep him. Yeah, They've I, already I, made when, up their mind. When you're giving them a bag of fucking balls as return, like I don't think they're going to trade Second-round pick's about as good as you could expect for a 39-year-old quarterback. You, you, you called him the second-best quarterback in football. Who will maybe only play a year? Okay, that's great. They have, I'm just saying there's no market. You, you have to trade, trade somebody for a player for the that makes your Super Bowl chances 51. percent Seems like it should be worth more than a second round pick. Not if there's no one else to offer it, and that's where he just decided he wants to go. Like, well, I'm then sorry, he can stay with the Packers and fucking sit on the bench. But they've already said they're not going to do that. Well, they've yeah, already said they're going to shockingly trade. Shockingly enough, teams may change their mind. Yeah, they're I, not I don't just going to play their entire plan on the table and give away all <laughs> leverage they have in the situation. Like, Look, I think you're correct in assessing. Pick... Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. Well, I'm just going to say, I think you're right in assessing the situation as there's probably not nearly as many suitors as Aaron Rodgers thought there would be in his own head. And there's not nearly as many suitors as the Packers would hope there would be to create some sort of bidding war. But yeah, they're not just going to lay it out in the line in the press and go, you know what? We take a fourth. We're just really tired of this I agree. guy. I agree with that. But at the same time, I don't think. I don't think anyone's offering any first round draft picks and I don't think any are forthcoming. And I don't think that the Packers kind of even can anticipate that. It'd be lovely to get it, but I think a second round pick that it's conditional that if the Jets or whoever accomplish, you know, certain, it could turn into a first if, uh, you know, that's probably the best. It, honestly, that's offers on the table. The Packers will take it and run. I think who wouldn't a second round pick for Aaron Rodgers? Probably not the Packers would be my guess. The second round pick, which can become conditionally a first and additional conditional picks based on uh, playing in future years. Yeah, that's the best yeah, possible that, that's offer. Set in stone because Tim says so. No, no, but I think that's the best possible offer they could they could get. I don't think 
anybody would offer more for someone who's 39 years old. I mean, I can see you're saying those other conditional picks are conditional firsts. Uh, I guess they could all, they would all be based on performance, I guess, whether he plays and what the performance level is. Well, I don't know if I like, I would assume there might be a, if the jets make the playoffs, some sort of situation like that, if he plays over 60% of their snaps, that's what I mean. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. So would it it be a situation where the first would, it would basically be a first round pick based on like the minimum conditions, because if you're the Raiders, if they could afford it, why wouldn't you just give them a first round pick for Aaron Rodgers? Because they have like this pick in the draft or something? Or if you're the 49ers, why don't you do this? And give up the 30th pick. Because they already gave up the world for a quarterback who's played six games. They're not going to do that. Yeah, but I mean, a second round pick doesn't seem like a lot. I, they, they already gave up the world, but that's something they they still have because this price point has now been driven down so far by you. Does it work? Well, it's not, not not me. I'm reading in the press what people who actually follow this are saying. That's yeah, for their sources. Are you just We're, reading off that stupid report that came out tonight from the guy whose previous report was like the most wrong thing in the world? I follow. No, no. I follow several. Look. I, I don't think there's a first round pick available. The 13th would you, would, overall would pick like is never going. That? I mean, like a straight up, it is a first round pick. Uh, I would be, I don't think there's literally nobody who's reporting that that's the cost. Okay. Well, I'd be willing to bet that it's at least a first round pick. There's no way Aaron Rodgers is going for less than Christian McCaffrey went for. Yeah. I think it's almost certain he's 39 and he may only play. McCaffrey's a a fucking no back. There is no team that can afford would ever consider giving up more for what might be a one year player. I'm sorry. San Francisco is very clearly that team. There's a zero percent chance a the Green Bay will trade in conference, and b there's no chance there's no chance to give up a first form. So Green Bay is Green. So hold on, hold on. I want to hear your logic on this. Unthinkable, because Rogers clearly has not expressed. I I am Aaron Rodgers. I get to pick where I want to go according to you. And the yeah, Packers okay. have to do whatever I say. So according to you, he's only picked the Jets. So he has Why to go would to the Jets. Ever so the Packers, who will do whatever Aaron wa- Rodgers wants, will not trade him in conference, though. That's now one of the stipulations. It, no, if he worked out a deal and said, I want to go to San Francisco, sure. But they'll never give up a first for him. That's not on the table. That's not, not, that's not a live option here. So you don't think the 30th pick for San Francisco gets this done? I don't think they would ever offer it for a one-year rental when they already spent a million draft picks to draft a quarterback who's played six games for them. Well, I, mean, I mean, I think it's pretty clear that they are one quarterback away <laughs> from being probably Best the odds on favorite to win the Super Bowl. I think they would very gladly give up the third. There's pick no the draft. chance they could do that. This team can't do that. Like that's insanity. Why, why would they that, why would that be insanity? Or a quarterback who's on the roster who hasn't played, who you don't know how good he is. And he'll still be on the roster sitting there waiting if Aaron Rodgers retires at the end of this next season. Just, it, that's just bad uh, husbanding of resources. No, it's not. It's not, not. Everyone, it, it, not it's that actually, it's worked it's out. It's actually not playing into a sunk cost fallacy. <laughs> exactly. But it's not a sunk cost. He might actually have been worked that. We don't know yet. Great. Yeah, he, he might be great. That's fantastic. According to you, the second best quarterback in football for this year is available to a team that has lost in the NFC Championship game two straight years because they don't have a fucking quarterback. I, I hear exactly what you're saying. I'm telling you that the f- uh, first round pick from San Francisco is never, ever, 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 ever forthcoming for him. That team can't make that trade. I mean, I, it actually seems like a very sensible trade. That team will not consider that trade. I'm sorry. I they think won't. organizations are getting much more aggressive about, like Pat was saying, sort of not buying into the sunk cost fallacy, specifically with the quarterback position. And though it probably in the long run did not work out, even though it seemed like it might with Kyler Murray and the Cardinals. Like, I think that was really a turning point for the league where they're like, we don't have to give these, you know, first round picks or these guys that we maybe expelled a lot of draft capital on three or four or five years to prove themselves. If it's not working, let's pull the cord right now. Well, that's fair, but that's a wholly different circumstance. But I'm just saying, I think it's indicative of where organizations are going, specifically when it comes to the quarterback position. And I would say too, with an aging core of players in San Francisco, Gorgarian got oh. cut off. His take was too hot. Clearly. Anyway, it doesn't seem like there's any the market. It seems like there's no market for Rodgers outside of the Jets. You haven't written them. He has to get, they have to get permission to talk to the Packers about it. And literally only the Jets have been given permission. Well, do you think so? He's gonna... It doesn't, it doesn't seem like there's any other offers available because you can't make offers. Well, Garyan, do you think 
if it's a what would you actually tim what would you put the percentages on of rogers being a jet eh, like 75 percent at this point so if they not, not a slam dunk but you know i would say there's probably a three or four chance given that They've had negotiations, so clearly stuff has gone on well before that, and the, the Packers have formally authorized him to talk to the Jets. That Yeah, I'd say there's three, a three in four chance that it happens. And does that mean there's a one in four chance that Carson Wentz is the starting quarterback? I, I don't know that they would pursue him. Although, honestly, you know, better than, better than Zach Wilson. Wilson's terrible. Well, someone did point out to me that, I mean, you hate Wentz because he sucks. Fair enough. And he does suck. But they, you can also get other shitty quarterback. Taylor Heineke is your starting quarterback. <laughs> also an upgrade from Zach Wilson. So you'd be pumped if Heineke was a starting no, quarterback? No, not pumped. Oh, but I, I heard he was very good from you last year. Better than Zach Wilson. That's a very low bar. Sure is. But that team went 7-10 and 10 with Zach Wilson playing the majority of their games at quarterback. Will they so re-sign like, Mike White? Probably. I mean, if you're Mike White, why would you re-sign in a place that's trying to get another starting quarterback? I've heard he's a top 15 guy in this league. Shouldn't he go find his own team? It's funny that Aaron Rodgers can't go for a first-round pick, but the minimum amount of first-round picks to trade for Mike White was two. Yeah, he's younger. No one's trading for Mike White. No, the, the, the Rodgers being 39 and having to deal with his nonsense every single offseason and probably only getting one year out of him, like that just limits the return that you could ever hope for. I, I agree. Does. Like I think he ends up on the Jets. I think it's more likely than not. Um, and and honestly, if you're the Jets, you better hope you get Aaron Rodgers because the way this market is sort of transitioning, um, and the fact that as much as I would have laughed had the Jets given Derek Carr a grand sum of money, uh, he was at least sort of a a backup option uh, that mm-hmm. is no longer available. And also, you just willingly put Nathaniel Hackett in your organization for the sole purpose of recruiting Aaron Rodgers. And as we saw last season, when you do that and don't get Aaron Rodgers, bad things happen. Well, I don't know if it was the sole reason. And I also think that Hackett, while he wasn't cut out to be a head coach, has had actual success as an offensive coordinator. Well, but he wasn't wasn't bad in Jacksonville. He was terrible every season except the two years he got to use Aaron Rodgers at his MVP level. I mean, he took the Jaguars as you'll see all the way to the AFC Championship. I uh, I think the defense took them all the way to the... uh, There's a reason we call them Saxonville. Okay, but without question... uh, No, sorry, I'm blanking on the fellows, the quarterback's name. Like Bortles? Bortles played his best season ever. Again, low bar. Low bar, but it was good enough, right? That jet, this Jets team has an awesome defense and an offense that isn't too dissimilar from that Jags team. I don't think like, Nathaniel Hackett is a good coach. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna, I'm willing okay. to die on that. Thing. No, I understand that. I, I don't know how good of a coach. I think he's a decent offensive coach. Obviously, he was not cut out to be a head, head coach. But like, you could do worse. You could have Josh McDaniels as your coach. He doesn't know what he's doing. Like, he, I mean, he, he seems like worse. a perfectly fine offensive coordinator in 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 your version of this logic. He'd be a great offensive coordinator, not as a head coach. Okay, well, Nathaniel Hackett's not your head coach. He's your offensive coordinator, and I still think that's a bad thing. We'll see. Maybe maybe he will be. I mean, he's Unless gonna... he recruits Aaron Rodgers. There you go. Yeah, I, I mean, mean that's hopefully that's when his still... team, hopefully he won't just pass the ball needlessly like Mike McDaniel does and throw the Dolphins out of the playoffs. And you mean playoff, playoff head coach Mike McDaniel? <laughs> yeah, the guy who, again, if he knew how to run the ball in a couple of games last year, would have won three or four more games and would have had a better matchup. I mean, if he knew how to tell won. time and count to 40, they might have beat the Bills, but he still made that the playoffs. Too. That too. If he could tell time, that would have helped. When was the last time the Jets made the playoffs? 2010 season. Oh. But McDaniels is a bad coach. I mean, McDaniels is a bad coach. One year with the team brings Miami to the playoffs. Gary, and you're a Miami fan. I'm not talking about McDaniel. I'm talking about McDaniels. Oh, Josh McDaniels. Oh, Josh McDaniels. Josh McDaniels. But it's, it seems like you're throwing a lot a of slander coach. on to Mike McDaniel as well. Well, I just don't think his end game management is very sound, but he's also I a mean, rookie. Look, I think at a certain point, Andy Reid still can't use his timeouts, and we consider him one of the best head coaches in the NFL. Andy Reid's gotten, so no, no, on... gotten better at that. He's sure, not but it nearly took, as stupid as he used to do. It took two decades. Some of these guys who devote themselves so fully to play calling, they're going to have shortcomings elsewhere, but I'd still prefer to have a head coach who calls a good offensive scheme. Nathaniel Hackett will not call a good offensive scheme. The other... QB signings that have happened so far have actually benefited the Jets, Tim. You didn't want Derek Carr. You're going really. nowhere with Not Derek really. Carr. You're not going, going to go nowhere with Gino. That would have been great, though. It would be kind of hilarious. I don't think he'd ever do that. But I was happy for Gino. 
if you think Seattle don't, are a good match, if you don't get Rogers, you now get basically the equivalent of Derek Carr for one fourth of the money, or you draft somebody. Hmm. So, I mean, that, and, and yeah, well, I mean, I think that they all realize that Wilson's a dead dock. So and why is he on the team? What are you gonna do? Get rid of him. You him. said that you said he would be starting in the XFL. I mean, just they're clearly not going to cut him, but they're not going to play him. Sign like, Ben DiNucci. The... He's tearing up the XFL. <laughs> you, could going... anyway. you could have Jimmy G. You could have Jimmy G. Nate Peterman is a free agent. You love him. Stidham. I think they'll draft a quarterback at that point. No, they're that's not going to draft you know? a quarterback and start him. They're going to play a veteran quarterback or Zach Wilson. This team doesn't do that. This team drafts rookies and starts them. That's what they've been doing for 20 years. They don't they I don't just don't draft know what them. kind of quarterback you're getting with where the Jets are currently picking in the first round. Like the if 13th, anything, yeah, even I mean, like, you have to move up, right? You quarterbacks up. are getting helium. So you, you would rather give up draft capital to move up rather than trying to sign Lamar to a huge extension? Well, that only costs two like, first round picks. It seems like nobody, and, and the message has been sent, nobody is going to make any offers to Lamar Jackson. So do you believe it's collusion? I mean, technically no, but like the, the, you know, you can be sure that the owners don't want anyone getting guaranteed contracts the way that John Watson got. And uh, therefore can't set the precedent the second time. Teams that really, really, really should be in on Lamar Jackson, Carolina, Atlanta, Miami. So they have absolutely no interest in two first round picks and for what it would cost to sign him. I don't know. It seems weird to me that all these teams that are quarterback starved and there is a really, you know, top tier quarterback available and they're not even interested in kicking the tires because the cost of doing business would be a $200 million guarantee. It'd be $250 million guarantee. No, he won't get that. And I don't think he's he's not asking for that. What's that? If a $200 million guarantee was on the table, he would sign it instantaneous yeah but he, he i mean that I'm offer won't come with either. you on that but what did what did deshaun get in guaranteed money 250, 250. then lamar but probably wants 251 he won't get it he won't get 150 guaranteed well, no they, one's going to offer it to him then and, and it's it's unfortunate lamar deserves it more than than demar uh than deshaun watson does it's not going to happen he's going to play on this tag nobody is going to offer him a deal it's interesting. You think there'd be, you think Ursay would, you know, just be out late one night and be like, hey, Lamar, let's go. No, I think, because I, I think, think there's he's... a chance the Colts, like, if I, I mostly agree with Tim, like, I, I don't know if you can call it collusion, but it seems pretty clear what is happening here. Mm-hmm. Um, but Ursay has shown that he's maybe the owner willing to go against these sort of consensus o- owner movements. Um, and they desperately need a quarterback. They have for some time. I would say that like they are the dark horse team that might do this. But after that, if, if if we're really believing the reports we heard yesterday, that the Falcons are out, that the Panthers are out. I know the Dolphins, there's there's like some some timing stuff that even if they were interested, they'd have to wait till like after the draft because they don't have a first round pick this year. So uh, the, the timing of that wouldn't work. So that might be a weird one because of semantics, but you know, right. the Raiders said they might not be in and they just might not have enough actual cash to get a guaranteed deal like that done was the reporting we were hearing today. I believe it. Um, yeah. So it, it, it really does seem like for no justifiable on field reason, whoa, whoa, whoa. this isn't going to happen. And see, there was some good I, reporting I, I saw that. today too, about how the Bengals and chargers will not be able to afford the guaranteed money their quarterbacks are going to require if these guaranteed contracts become the wave of the future. Well, that yeah. People will be boxing out certain franchises from being able to offer competitive contracts to quarterbacks, and the owners are, are all... No one wants to hang their fellow owners out to dry. Well, because like, I don't them, know whether that's getting true. Held, then if, if they hang the other ones out to dry, then they're getting hung out to dry on something else. And all you have to do with Burrow and Herbert is just essentially copy the Patrick Mahomes contract mm-hmm. where it's roster bonus guarantees where you don't have to tie that up in escrow. And then all of a sudden it's listen, I, this is also a Lamar problem too. Let's not try to pretend it's not that he should have an agent. What's that? You should have an agent. I, it's, it's nothing to do with his agent. Nothing he's, to do with that. People are fucking he's scared a to give this guy $250 million yeah. coming off two straight injuries. Now I will say, I, I think there there's definitely more uncertainty 
at least I would look at it with a lot more uncertainty from last year's injury, just because there was such a massive divide between player and mm-hmm. team medical staff. I mean, that's always a red flag. Um, although really the like consensus around the Ravens and how some of the players clearly feel about Ravens management the last couple of months. And, and I guess this is all stemming because of Lamar um, doesn't seem like a lot of people love that organization. So who really knows what was going on with the medical staff, but some of the issue in the season prior, I mean, I know he only played 12 games, but I think he missed like three games because of COVID. So like, I, I don't I thought really he know like the last four games in the 2021 season with an ankle injury or knee injury. I thought like he missed a game, like the whole month of December, the last two yeah. years, both times because of uh, joint injuries. Look, he's, he's a obviously an exceptionally talented quarterback. I think even his arm skill isn't properly gauged because one, the offensive system built around him was not accentuating that part mm-hmm. of his game well enough. And um, as everyone has talked about, he just hasn't been given any weapons whatsoever. Mm-hmm. I believe the Ravens have spent the second fewest dollars on receiving talent the last two seasons. So what he's been able to do essentially by himself and with Mark Andrews is really incredible, but I don't want to compare him directly to Russell Wilson because I think he's much better than Russell Wilson. See, I don't think he is. But, he's better than Russell Wilson today, but he's not as good as Russell Wilson was when Seattle was winning Super Bowls. Sure. I think it's comparable at the very least, but we, I I think the question that people are asking about Lamar long-term is let's say these injuries do pile up and he doesn't have the same mobility and movement and the the ability to break an 80 yard run Mm -hmm. out of nowhere, which is his game breaking skill. I don't think anyone doubts that his arm is good. His arm is good, but can he just be a pocket passer? And well, that's where I was going. I I was going to say like, we saw this season, Russell Wilson now without the same level of mobility. I mean, he never had Lamar Jackson mobility, but he had mobility. And now that that has been removed from his game, he looks terrible, re- regardless of how much you want to put on that on the offensive system we saw last season. So I'll, I'll give that to you. Like, this is clearly not as easy as if he was Justin Herbert. However, the fact that this is such a quarterback-driven league and the fact that there are so many teams and franchises out there that continuously just churn through mediocre quarterback after mediocre quarterback. I mean, I, I and even the Daniel Jones deal, I understand only half that money was guaranteed. Yeah. It's very front loaded and there's a way to get out of that. <laughs> but it seems insane that not one team is willing to give a 26 year old former MVP, a bunch of guaranteed money to just take a stab at this thing. Uh, it, it's, it's very strange. It's, it's unprecedented. I'd, I'd be willing to say. Well, not only do you have to guarantee him all this money, you now also have to give up two first round picks sure. to get him at the same time. Like how good is your yeah. team going to be? Yeah. It's it's so hard to like have this directly in comparison to the Deshaun Watson deal because well, again, they also had to trade. And I understand you can't you can't use that as the market. It it's it's the NBA or the NFL equivalent to the NBA Rudy Gobert trade. You can't just keep using that as the thing that all GMs now must yes. use as a litmus test because Kevin one Durant, GM is dumb. Kevin Durant just got traded for less than Rudy Gobert. Did. Exactly. <laughs> but this free the free agency stuff, the money, though, this is something we've seen throughout sports very often, which is there's just the sort of like there's the positional value setting deal. Um, and I and I understand the guaranteed money is different than the four hundred fifty million dollars Patrick Mahomes is getting. And you mentioned it. So much of that is is roster bonuses and, and and they were able to construct that in a way that is very team friendly. Um, but if you're Lamar, I, again, I just, I can understand why he's sitting there going, Deshaun Watson got this. How can I not get this? Well, Tim, we talked about this last year when Deshaun was on the market. Uh, who do you think teams would rather have Deshaun Watson as their quarterback or Lamar Jackson? And I think Jeff and I sided with Deshaun Watson for the future of who you would want as your quarterback and your team Lamar on that. And Lamar has been a better quarterback throughout the course of his career, but now you got to sign him to five years of guaranteed money. And Deshaun looked like ass last year. Now, I don't know if that's going to continue going forward. Can he get back to being who he was? But when you take a look at Deshaun Watson, how he's built, it feels at least like his durability should be there deeper into his career. Guys, the size of Lamar based on the skill that he has specifically that he excels at just don't seem to last very long. I think there's a part of that has uh, making people hesitant about it. Absolutely. But, just, but, and this is something you like to trot out all the time uh, when you just flip flop on your takes, you know, when new information is presented, you know, you have to change your opinion. So the market is being set. 
based on what we've seen the like past like big four quarterback deals. Kyler Murray, Deshaun Watson, Russell Wilson. I think those are like the, the last big three, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Those were all, all fucking terrible look- deals. Why would anyone? Yeah. Want no, to they're those? bad. Yeah. Just what yeah. to say, all of them look atrocious. Yeah. But maybe and Kyler so, in particular, fuck, to bad. your point, like we've seen Kyler for two consecutive seasons now when we're talking about just size break down repeatedly, like hot starts to begin the season and then just unable to make it through an entire season. Um, there, like there are competing factors in my head here. Like I can, I can totally understand where Lamar is coming from. And I can also understand that generally speaking, like you said, these recent deals have not looked good on the team and the most, the easiest way it seems to build a highly competitive roster is to hit on a quarterback in the draft and then utilize the five years where he's affordable to build out your roster. So from a team building perspective, I can understand it again. I'm just shocked with just some of these teams that continuously roll out the worst quarterbacks possible that they yeah, would not be willing to take that, a chance. That you would think they would be starved at quarterback to the point that they would, somebody would roll the bones and, and, and do this. And what, what I when don't, I, when, when I saw Carolina was out immediately, I was like, gee, that's something else. They, they could also have plans. Like they, they, I, I think the way that they're looking at it, it's like if this is going to be two first round picks at minimum, are we better off trading up to the first pick, yeah. getting who we want right now or trading for Lamar? And they may have made the them or Atlanta have both looked at the situation and said, we'd rather quarterback one quarterback two in this draft rather than take Lamar and have to pay him all this money. Cause I we're not good that. now anyway. I respect that. I, I don't know that either of the top tier quarterbacks in this draft are anywhere good, nearly as good as Lamar. I mean, and how, how much how much game study have you done on the? I'm not an expert. I'm not an expert on the the quarterbacks coming in. Richardson is the fellow I'm actually most intrigued by, but whether it's Stroud or or the fellow from Alabama, like sure, like I don't think they quite have NFL MVP upside like he does, but you know. We'll see, I well, guess. Do, I mean, do, I, I think anyone he, being drafted in the top five as a quarterback has MVP upside. At least you'd hope so. I, I guess. Okay, you, you fair enough. Us, fair you enough. told us Zach Wilson did because he was drafted no, second. No, fair, no, no. Okay, that's that's a fair point, I guess. And if you if you put Lamar on Atlanta next year, is Atlanta any good? Like, maybe they'll make the playoffs. I think they win that division. I mean, that's, yeah, I that's a really special circumstance. Or, where... NFC is so bad. They probably win nine yeah. or ten games comfortably. And yeah. Have every they get chance slaughtered to... by one of the good teams in the playoffs, either the Eagles or the Niners. Maybe. Or Dallas. Like, I mean, to Maybe. your point, that could be part of the equation for a team like the Raiders or, or to a lesser extent, a team like the Dolphins, where do you really want to mortgage that much of mm-hmm. your future and put that much risk down when there is currently a generational level of quarterback play in the AFC? Like, even if you get Lamar Jackson, and, and I think Lamar Jackson is without question a top 10 quarterback, in the NFL, eight of the guys ahead of him are probably playing in the AFC next season. Yeah. That's a very fair point. I just, here are the teams that I wrote down that might go for Lamar. Indy, the Texans, and the Jets. See, I don't think the Texans do it. I, I think they're kind of... They're, they're, they're a stupid franchise, so they might... <laughs> that is a good point. They are a I stupid don't, Yeah, but see, I don't know it would be... I don't know that it would be stupid to bring Lamar in, like... I don't think that that would be dumb at all. They don't have anyone. What's he? He's, yeah. he's basically leaving for a worst version of what Baltimore is. If he wants the money, and then they're willing to spend the money, I just think the Texans in a terrible just division. Went a they would three probably, and a half they would, year saga. To, yeah, they'd probably to, win the AFC South if you put them on that team next year. At least be competitive with Jacksonville. They, 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 they have the best be, quarterback in the division. I mean, is he? So, I think yes, Trevor I would, I would put him better. over. Put, put it, put it okay, this way: I think he's better than Trevor Lawrence. If it came out, if it came out tomorrow. If it came out tomorrow that you had to give up two first round picks and guarantee someone two hundred million dollars, and that guy was Trevor Lawrence, people would trade for Trevor Lawrence because of his build. Yeah, of course he's a. There's less risk. I agree with that. So, but I mean, Trevor Lawrence, his upside is no better than Lamar's because we've seen Lamar's upside. Lamar's upside is the best quarterback in the NFL. Yeah, but this isn't about Lamar's upside. I mean, again, this is no, no, I get it. And Lamar was never never the best quarterback in the NFL. He had the best season of someone in the NFL. He was was the best quarterback that season. But he was, was. you know, he had the best season, but he was never better than Mahomes. I don't know. That's a semantical argument that I'm not not smart enough to be able to parse. I mean, that's the MVP argument every year is completely semantics. 
Yeah, exactly. It's like, semantical. So I, I'm not quite sure what in it. In no what it means. world, if you were starting a team or needed a quarterback to start a game, that you would ever have put Lamar over Mahomes for a second. That season? No, yeah. no one would have. Sure would have. No one would have. It may, you would apparently, but I don't think anyone else would have. Okay, well, that season I would have. Yes. Would you have, Garyan? No, it's Mahomes. Last year, well, and Mahomes have... is great, but Mahomes, like Mahomes, is again, he's he's the best quarterback. But it's not. There's not a massive gap between him and Burrow, between him and Herbert, or between him and the best QBs. Like there is a gap, but it's not massive. They're every bit. Of, I mean, Burrow's beaten him in the playoffs, and Herbert has beaten them head to head. And like, yes, he's the best quarterback, but is there a massive chasm? Like that's kind of dumb. It's not accurate to what we see. I, I think that there is a pretty massive chasm between Mahomes, everyone else, and then that next level of player, then everyone else. I, I don't think so. I don't think it's massive. I think that's kind of silly to say, actually. we've The, the evidence is, is clear that those, that those all those guys are really, really close to each other. Mahomes is slightly better, yes, but they're all really close to each other. I mean, this is a guy that just won two Super Bowls, lost in one, and been to five straight AFC Championship games. And they completely yes. retooled his roster this year and took away He's, his best weapon. Uh, he's still the best. It doesn't mean that he's the best by so much. It's ridiculous. He's not Michael Jordan in the NBA. Like it's not, not there. I mean, he, I feel like he's kind of like LeBron. No, I don't agree with that either. Like LeBron for what? A 10 year period in the NBA was by far the best player. And he won one MVP. I mean, the, the AFC championship thing is the only thing I can think about when I hear that is LeBron going to seven consecutive Eastern conference finals. Like you just don't get that level of, I mean, Brady did it. Yeah, and Brady's sure. and, and Brady's known as the best one of the greatest of all time. <laughs> but no one would have ever said, "Oh, Brady is leaps and bounds and miles better than any other quarterback in the NFL," and it's not even close at the time. No one would have said that. They've all would I mean, have. There would have been arguments to say he's the best quarterback uh, that you take him over anybody else, but it would have been very close. Okay, you know what? So that, that, I'm actually not. That's uh, a fair argument when Manning was running hot, uh, like his yeah. peak as well. But I think that's the only guy who was in that conversation. Like, even when Russell Wilson was good, no one was saying Russell Wilson. No, I just think that Burrow and Her- just to throw, put him on the table. Burrow I, is, I like that you're like, putting Herbert into this conversation now. I think he's close, but I would like put Burrow at like 90, 90% of what Mahomes is. Well, why is Herbert better than Lawrence? Lawrence may be better after this year. But L- Lawrence, Lawrence beat had him a, in the playoffs. Lawrence had a rough rookie year and then played really well in his second year. Maybe he will eclipse him. Maybe he will. It's possible. Who has more play? I mean, I'm wins. just like I was curious to see what Trevor Lawrence was able to do with an actual functional NFL coaching staff. I, I am very curious to see what, you know, um, we get from Justin Herbert this season with an offensive coordinator who might know how to throw the ball more than 10 yards down the field. Not to steal Jeff's talking points, but. I don't see that working out either. I, I do like in Tim's power rankings that Josh Allen doesn't exist. <laughs> no, Josh Allen's is right there, too. But again, yeah, I sure. think that speaks to my my other point, sure. which is if, if you're a team like the Raiders mm-hmm. and there's all this risk built in already, do you really want to guarantee someone a quarter of a billion dollars yeah. and then have to line him up against four or five quarterbacks in your conference that you can't definitively say he's better than? And he probably isn't better than, if yeah. we're being honest with ourselves. It's very like, tough. Like if the Raiders I mean, you can't not- just screw off and die either. Like, you got to try to win, but it's also a really tough spot. It, it's a... It's an extremely tough spot to be in because you can't give up. And yet it's very hard to be in a position where you're as good as those other teams. It's very tough. If the Raiders got Lamar, there's not even a guarantee that they wouldn't be last in their own division this year. It's not a guarantee, but yeah, Denver's not very good. I mean, Denver, you're right. I mean, Denver, we we just, you you even said that Nathaniel Hagg is a terrible coach, that Denver's defense should be okay if Sean Payton can implement like the the old man Drew Brees offense with Russell Wilson. I mean, they have weapons. Their offense possible. could You're right. be good. It's, it's possible. You're right. The Raiders, even with Lamar, could be for you're, you're darn right about that. So it's a tough scene. It is, but I mean, at the same time, you can't just give up. They have a lot of talent on that roster, too. Well, maybe Rodgers can go to Baltimore for Lamar. Problem solved. <laughs> there you go. Everybody's happy. Because Lamar would be, I mean, would you rather have Hurts or Lamar? Mm. probably hurts right it's very close i mean if we're factoring co- in contract it would it would have to be hurts. sure sure well hurts okay. is about to get paid i guess that's true too no it's lamar like head to head it's i think lamar is the better i think it's very close i think i would side lamar but it's very close so he'd be either the best or second best quarterback in the nfc I, I think he'd be the if, if Rogers leaves and, yeah. and even at this point I, I can't definitively yeah. say Rogers is would 
would be a great quarterback at his age 39 season. But mm-hmm. yeah, I think, I think Lamar would be the best quarterback in the NFC. If that's the yeah, case, who's the third right. best quarterback? If Rodgers leaves, Lamar goes, and Hurts and Lamar are number one and two, who would be the third best quarterback? Is it Kirk Cousins? Prescott, Goff? I guess. Prescott, yeah, I guess. I think Dak. I guess, I guess a healthy Stafford, maybe? Yeah. A healthy I, I just Stafford, don't know if he's the Rams. healthy again. Yeah. Gino? Yeah. I think Gino's like sixth. It's it's crazy how quickly you get to Gino. Kirk Cousins. Fields? <laughs> yeah. No. I mean, all right, well, let's, uh, maybe that's enough on Lamar. Just I, I think that there's just a lot of – do you think not having an agent's actually hurting him here? Yes. Yeah, I, I do. It has to be a, a real hindrance. I think this is like really and, – and not I'm not saying it shouldn't be, but this is like very personal to him right now because he's had to have these negotiations in person with no filter with the Ravens. And, and I like this – there was a great example of this happening in baseball a couple weeks back where – Corbin Burns, who's the best pitcher in baseball. No, Cor- Corbin Burnson. He played on the Indians in Major League. The Bernstein Bears went into contract negotiation, salary arbitration. And, you know, he came out of this process going like, it it really sucks to sit there and your team is like, you're the reason we didn't make the playoffs. Guy who maybe won the NL Cy Young or should have. And, you know, so, I, I just think some of these guys don't want to hear the stuff that is being said generally to an agent where then they can kind of like broken telephone it down their way. So maybe this is a little bit more personal. Maybe this is a little more, I'll, I'll show you, I'll go somewhere else and someone else will give me this money. Um, Yeah. Maybe this would have gotten done a little faster with an agent. They're like Cartman and they need butters, their agent to filter the internet through all the unpleasant things that he would see and only give him the things that he wants to see about how jacked he is. You know, this is almost the 4,000th show. Wow. 4,000 of your various existences. Yeah, I mean, of the all podcast? On the same podcast feed. Find that. What, what's the first date? Uh, 2010. It's the one that we, we recorded at my grandma's house. Yeah, I, rem- I remember doing that, that. That's when you said that Sean Green would be a 10,000 yard rusher in the NFL. I mean, we, we were doing this podcast <laughs> on uh, Skype without recording it well before that, but you're right. That's true. Like when when I first moved, we would just watch this on Sundays. Yeah, we would do a four hour version of the podcast that wasn't recorded since 2010. So that's four, 13 years. Wow. Yeah. 4,000 episodes. I, of I which I'm probably, you You were on what, 3,995 of them? Who, me? Yeah. I mean, I, I'm on all of them. Like that includes like the, so it doesn't include dog or pass, for example. No, no, on the Pat Mayo experience, like yeah, the just shows with me in them. Oh, okay. It, well, I mean, there are a couple baseball episodes I've hosted, but I think you pop up at the start going, "Hi, this won't be me." So technically, you are on those episodes too. Exactly. I, I always try to force my way into it, but yes, I, I think we're at three ninety, like sixty three or something like that. The people are clamoring for a live show at some point. Are they? Are people asking you? I've heard people say, when is there going to be a live show? You can do it at Lower Deck. You you need to name names. No, I don't know who these people are. They're all no one. So no one has asked you that? If people actually asked about it, I would do a live show. I'd fly in Gary and Jeff, because I looked at the numbers. Gary, and despite having been a not steady part of the show the last three years, you're still this person who's appeared on the show the second most ever behind tim or tim doesn't count in this category no tim then you then jeff yeah well that's because jeff was on a hiatus for a while and i mean yeah but gary and used to be on like three times a week (laughs) yeah i'm surprised that gary i actually yeah gary would have been first but yeah i think yeah that's true yeah when gary and sat next to me at work and we recorded there we we did a lot of shows together (laughs) Yeah, no, that's fair. I'd be interested to see what the power, what the percentages are, which guests well, assume, and on which percentage of shows. I assume Seeley comes in fourth after Jeff. Yeah, I, I believe Seeley is fourth, but there's like... But Cam did golf with you every single week for a year, and he did some football stuff too. So like that racked up a bunch of episodes, plus he does it now once a week again. Yeah, I mean, Seeley's been doing the same show with me once a week during football for eight years in a row. Okay. Yeah. All right. And Cam was on one year, then didn't appear on the show for five years and then came back. <laughs> okay. Fair. Came back with authority though. Yeah. Like Tambo is starting to rack up some numbers now too. It's all repetition. 
like I tell people, I am like Homer. I showed up the day the nuclear plant opened and they gave me a job. <laughs> uh, everyone else is qualified. I'm just here because I showed up the day it opened. Is anyone qualified to be on one of these shows? Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm the least qualified. I don't know about that. I've had I mean, some... you are the most insane person. You've won many awards. Many yeah, well, awards last year's was, was was a lot of you know, a lot of questionableness. You know, what votes count, which votes don't. People are going in there and deciding for themselves which votes are valid, which votes are aren't valid, you know. I, mean, I miss that, I miss when we used to happened. take votes. The, the guy the guy who runs the custies didn't go in individually and take them out. He just ran a search of the same email that voted over and over and just gave them one vote instead of five hundred. I mean, I maybe we should just count every vote. Mm. I mean, if you I really miss when want we used that. to give out most sane. <laughs> I feel did like I won that give, one year. Did we used to give out most sane? Yeah, yeah. we did. Gary and won. I have no recollection of that, but I think yeah, that's probably the. Yeah. Okay. I, I actually think you're a deserving recipient of that award. Well, thank you. So we might have to do something for the four thousandth show. Is all I'm saying. The four thousandth extravaganza. Yeah, I think it'll be in like late May, early June, something like that. Okay. We'll get Troy McClure to host. Well, I mean, I think I'm going to host. Okay. Well, that's fair too. <laughs> but I'll we'll start releasing best of episodes of that content that I don't own and see what happens. Although they, 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 and I mean, that's another reason that you've been buried here, Gary. And all those videos don't exist anymore. Oh, that's true. Like they're gone. They've been scrubbed from the internet. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. other signings. Derek Carr to the Saints for what is this here that I have written down? Um, four years, 150 million, 60 million guaranteed. That's a bad deal. Like, what does yeah. this do? What does this do for you? You win the NFC South, maybe? Well, I mean, I will say, te- technically speaking, they went from, I believe, the third longest odds to win the NFC South to being the favorites currently, before free agency, before the NFL draft, mm-hmm. to winning the NFC South. So congratulations to the New Orleans Saints who won NFL free agency in February. Yeah, much- I mean, we talked about the best quarterback in the NFC. Like, maybe Carr was the answer to that question. No. After those two. Well, maybe he Carr's is. not as good as Kirk know. Cousins. Uh, he's right there. That's right on the Kirk he's Cousins. He's worse Kirk level. Cousins. Yeah, he's worse Kirk Cousins. That's a great way to describe Derek Carr. The NFC is so terrible, but this was a smart move for the Saints. No, like, but it's not. Like, why, why, why couldn't you just bring back Jameis again and run him out there? Is he substantially Clearly there was something Derek going Carr? on there. They couldn't even, they wouldn't even start Jameis over Andy Dalton. Like, clearly they were done with Jameis. They had decided in, like, week nine they were done with him, and that was that. So that was never coming to fruition again. I, I feel like you could have got almost any scrub to play quarterback for you, and you would didn't make, you got Stitham to play quarterback for you for one tenth the cost. You still would have been the favorites in the NFC South at this point. I mean, I think one of their major flaws, and and, and I know Tim was was saying earlier, like you you don't just go out there to not win games and not try. You can't play dead. But you know they lost Drew Brees, they lost Sean Payton, they lost the infrastructure of their entire organizational identity for a decade. And then they continued to try to win games as opposed to just being bad. Go be bad for a season or two and get a franchise quarterback in the draft or at least try. But they're now stuck in this just really strange position of being a seven or eight win team because they do have some talent on the defensive side of the ball and they've got a nice receiving core and I don't know. I just I don't know what their end game is here aside from trying to win the NFC South, which is is perfectly fine, but there's there's no possible way they are going to win the NFC because Derek Carr is now playing quarterback for them. I'm with you. It, it reminds me a lot of almost the Titans blueprint from the past few years, like when they re-signed Tannehill. They just played in this division that sucked so much. They were like, well, we'll get to the playoffs and we'll take our chances. And it Mm-hmm. kind of worked but it really didn't because i mean when it got to the point where they had to play in a meaningful game to try to get to the super bowl it, it wasn't close i mean i'd say they're probably more like the colts like similar situation but less success than tennessee like just continuing to run things back after losing a franchise cornerstone and sure the colts i will i will admit the first couple cracks the colts took at this post andrew luck I did think they had the infrastructure in place to to plop in a veteran quarterback and see how things went. But by attempt number four, maybe just call it quits and try to draft a guy who can maybe take the position for the next 10 years. They were pretty good with Rivers. 
Yeah. I mean, the playoffs. And look, yeah. they were fine with Wentz until like it completely self-destructed in the final two games of the season. Like Correct. people forget that Carson Wentz actually had pretty good numbers going into like the second week of December that year. Yeah, they beat the Patriots on a Saturday night game, which was like a big AFC tilt and like put them in like a 92% chance to make the playoffs. And it took, I mean, Paul won that massive parlay, but it took like 18 separate events in the last two weeks to conspire all against them to miss the playoffs. Like the Colts were just really humiliatingly bad last season. If you put Taylor Heineke on the Saints, Tim, and this is a very serious question. Would they be mm-hmm. the favorites in the NFC South right now? No. Really? Who would be? Carolina. With Darnold? They re-signed Darnold. Didn't Honestly, they? the advanced numbers said Darnold played really well last season. They and did. like it wasn't if, in EPA per play, he was fantastic. But it's Sam Darnold in the six game stretch. You've seen it before. You you know how yeah, this goes. But I so I like Frank Reich. I'm on team Frank Reich. If he thinks, looking at the numbers, looking at Darnold, that he can make it work, yeah, sure. Like, why not? You got him. He's cheap. There's upside with the guy. He's still incredibly young. Uh, he's better than signing Derek Carr for $500 million. He's okay, better than so drafting if, what a if QB the Saints, and you don't have what, a draft pick. What if the Saints inside Darnold? Uh, if the Saints signed it? Well, Darnold really was never leaving Carolina. I mean, he could have. Like they 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 sealed that up pretty quickly. I don't know if he ever left that building to have another meeting. I mean, they gave him what a one year deal. I don't think there was any market out there for him. Which which seems kind of strange, doesn't it? I don't think people realize who are smart. I don't think that enough people realize that he actually played decently in the last year. They scoff at it. They're not like Sam Darnold doesn't move any needles. I mean, does Derek Carr move? It? When did Derek yes, Carr start he does. moving needles? He was a big story, whether he should have been or not. He was like a big story in the NFL for the last month. Because he got benched? Because he got benched and because like he has really good statistics over his career and he's a quarterback who was going to trade hands in the NFL free agency. Like, I mean, does he have good statistics or was he just drafted at the exact right time in NFL history? Both. Like he's both. fine. Yeah, he, he is like, your He's league. good. He's not great. He's, he's just good. He is perpetually the 16th best quarterback in football. Yeah. Yeah, and then with a, with a couple of seasons where he was better than that. One season where he was better than that. Then you said he was going to win MVP, and then he broke his leg. He was pretty decent when the Raiders made the playoffs. Not, I guess now, not last year, but the year before last. And then he threw an interception to seal their fate in the playoffs on the final play of the game. Like, yeah, and the Bengals that, got a touchdown Carr that shouldn't is. have counted. But you're right. You're right. Uh, but he's I, a, I wouldn't he, have signed him. He, I don't, he, like, it wouldn't have been where I would have gone. How happy but, were you when he signed, knowing that he could now not sign with the Jets? I was pleased. It's not where I wanted the Jets to go. Would Derek Carr have made the Jets better? Yes. Yes, because the Jets went seven and ten with basically no quarterback play. So they probably would go ten and seven with Carr, which is nice, you know. Someone who's had had their team in the playoffs for, you know, thirteen years. It'd have been nice for a change, but it's not going to win a Super Bowl. So yeah. And and that's the thing that I don't understand about the Saints. It's not that I don't think that Carr makes the Saints better. He does. But where the mm-hmm. fuck are you going? What's what's the point of giving him one hundred and fifty million dollars? I mean, it's it's really funny just because he's taking over for Andy Dalton, who is just the him. prior generation's Derek he's Carr. The Spider Man meme. Yeah, I I I don't know. I, I I really don't understand it. Again, in the vein of try to make your team better. It made the team better. It wasn't a ton of guaranteed money. Like, I'm sure there's a way out of this contract reasonably at the end of maybe like the second season. I bet it's pretty front loaded like Daniel Jones's is, mm-hmm. but I I don't get it. Again, if I'm the Saints, I just want to be bad. I basically, I maybe don't go to the extent the Texans did, but that's what I would be looking to do as an organization if I'm the Saints. Like, let's just completely reset here. And the Panthers re-signed Darnold, but I mean their starting quarterback is probably whoever they draft, unless yeah, they want to use Darnold where they bridge. draft. What's that? Yeah, I mean, I I think you're right. I, I are, they, are they really going to give up a ton to go get the first pick? I don't I, know. I think that they are. I don't know. I think if they no, nah, I don't know. I really don't know. I wouldn't, for what it's worth. I mean, there's if you when you look at the draft order, even if like this deal that I mean, we can talk about Geno, but the deal that the Seahawks did with Geno is essentially a one year deal. Like, yeah. they could draft a quarterback at five, no problem. Yep. And, and that's why I think it was a really good Gino deal. And then cut Geno. Yep. Yeah. Wouldn't be the worst idea. 
and at least gives them a chance to be competitive in what looks like now a down NFC West. If Arizona's not going to have Kyle or who knows what's going on with the Rams, like maybe you can make the playoffs again with Gino. Or hell, if Gino is good, just keep playing him. And then you have this like huge asset sitting there. I mean, the asset gets deteriorated a little bit, but it's not like he's Josh Rosen, where you actually had to play him so everyone can see that he fucking stinks. You could probably mm-hmm. still trade him at some point for something else. Or you if you like, well, let's say they took Anthony Richardson at number five. Like, no, I does anyone think it whoever takes Anthony Richardson that Anthony Richardson is going to be starting for them week one? No, no, most so. people believe he'll be, you know, backing up and having like a red shirt type of season. So, isn't he, that the yeah, perfect? I think his ideal landing spot would be Seattle. I think you're right. Um, but I mean, can can we almost give the Saints and to to a lesser extent the Giants? Can we cut them a little slack just because there is this just crazy void of talent right now at the quarterback position in the NFC? Like, even even if we as outsiders think you can't reasonably look at a Derek Carr led Saints team going anywhere in the playoffs, even if they make the playoffs, we have acknowledged at this point that it's hard to name even the second best starting quarterback mm-hmm. in the NFC currently. Like, is it almost malpractice as a GM of a functional NFL franchise to not try to take advantage of this opening? I mean, again, I think on the surface, both those deals are terrible. But if you're the Giants and you just won a playoff game, and the NFC is as bad as it currently is and as topsy-turvy as it currently is, maybe it doesn't make any sense to kind of reshuffle the box. I don't blame the Giants nearly as much as I do New Orleans. I do and I don't. Like, I get why the Giants did what they did. Mm-hmm. It it just feels like this is going to seem like such a disaster in two years. Oh, maybe, yeah. but like if you were their GM, I think you would have done the same thing. No, I would have got rid of Barkley. And I would have too. I, I don't I know. The... Franchise, I would have franchised Jones and I would have got rid of Barkley. Yep. That I was think franchising that Barkley was fine. I think franchising was fine. because like, Franchising Barkley is fine if you don't have to give Daniel Jones $160 million. Well, the quarterbacks don't grow on trees. Well, then, franchi- he, then, then you know what? Who cares about your running back? He showed development last year. And if Dable has told you he's my guy and I think I can get a lot more out of him, then I think it's a slam dunk. I, I don't think there's any but, person at the GM in the GM chair who would have made a different decision. But if you're going to build the contract the way they built the contract, which is essentially, again, giving him two guaranteed years, and I think his cap hit is like $12 million in year three and year four. So it's very easy to get out mm-hmm. of it. The Giants need to get out of it. So even by giving him that amount of money and signing him to quote-unquote four years, the Giants sort of told you what their confidence level in Daniel Jones actually is. Yep. And we already know what their confidence level was coming into last season because they did not pick up his fifth-year option on his rookie deal. So what's stopping you from franchise tagging Saquon Barkley and giving up a second round pick apparently for Aaron Rodgers? That seems like the better move. Fair enough, but I just don't know. But again, Rodgers is a one year stop captain. You're right back to where but you it are. Looks like Daniel Jones that's is all you're two. seeing Daniel Jones as anyway, it seems. Maybe, maybe. But I mean, you also have it built in. If he plays well, you get to keep him. Sure. I, and, I understand look, what you're saying, but I honestly don't know that the Giants had a lot of options. I believe they were their hands were sort of tied. Maybe so. And the one good thing with Jones, as we saw from year four to year five, is he got a lot better. And maybe yeah. he continues to get better. But last year feels like kind of <clears throat> it feels like an outlier. <laughs> but like I don't think the Giants are gonna be any good this year. And don't you feel like because this is an easy situation to compare because legitimately Brian Dable is the connective tissue between these two organizations. But what is Daniel Jones biggest at, like talent that he brings to the table from the quarterback position? And granted he's a big body. So maybe he can sustain some of these hits that he takes in the running game. But we even saw Buffalo lock up Josh Allen to this massive contract and go, Hey, maybe let's like cool it with the running a little bit. And maybe the giants, maybe the mm-hmm. reason there's so much guaranteed money at the start of this deal is they can still say to Daniel Jones. Yeah, man, put your head down and go run into a couple linebackers. We don't care. Like, just go out and try to be you, and we don't have to worry about this two years from now. But if this is a situation where they now have to say, like, hey, man, you're the franchise quarterback, scale it back a little bit, what's Daniel Jones then without, like, 100% capacity in his running game? Because that's pretty terrifying to me. Yeah, I understand. Maybe they get him weapons, but, I mean, that's another spot where I actually didn't realize the running back like the number they got for Barkley is actually quite good. I think one year, 10 million, very low. That's yeah. fine. Yeah. Any that's why I didn't hate that tech. 
anyone would give him one year, 10 million. Again, it's, it's just... not, but it's not like, it's not that the number is bad, Tim. It's that they could have used the franchise tag on Daniel Jones and made him prove for a second consecutive season that like this progress yes. he's making is linear and that he didn't just I get it. Out. I just don't know that anyone would have made that choice. I mean, there are I, people... I think quarterback is so much more important than running back, even when you've got the face of a franchise like Saquon Barkley. And maybe from a PR perspective, it it, it would have been just absolutely annihilated. But I think that's the difference between quarterback and running back. It's the most important position in football versus mm-hmm. arguably a bottom five position. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't disagree with any of that, but I just think that the circumstances conspired such that the Giants had to play their hand the way they did. Maybe you're right about what they were forced to do, but I mean, I'm just going to, let's keep throwing the name out there for him. How substantially different are the Giants if Sam Darnold as their quarterback? I think they would have been worse. They're worse, but not, I don't think like substantially so. Yeah, I mean, it's not like Sam Darnold can't run. And also like if, if we're giving Brian Dable all this credit for turning around the career of Daniel Jones anyone? in year four, exactly. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, I like what Dable has done there. I like that he doesn't call plays. I like that he runs the team intelligently. Like I, I have a lot of confidence in what he's doing there. I think it's the right way to run a franchise. And so if you he's, just say you don't like Mike McDaniel, it's fine. No, I mean, it can work. The other way can work. I just think it's far more likely to work the way that uh, Dable is running it. And I like that. Uh, I trust him to make decisions and you can be sure that he was heavily involved in conversations about the quarterback position. How you feeling? About I mean, two? apparently their ownership group loves him. The GM loves him. Like, I, I don't know how much money, like value to put into that in my own head. Cause I I'm not in the room and the NFC sucks. Yeah. Well, this is it too. And the NFC sucks. So like run it back. Yeah. How not you like feeling? Caleb Williams is out there in the draft for you to take anyway. So what's the difference? Is Caleb Williams going to be the number one pick next year? Or is that just yeah. in your mind? You oh, Caleb that. Williams yeah, he's, is he's so gonna good. Be number one pick. He's going to be winning the Heisman. USC is probably going to win the national championship, in my opinion. Listen to so you. They're going to win the national Listen championship. Listen to you. Get they're not, the they're going undefeated. Already. They're going undefeated. He is the real deal. He couldn't even win a bowl <laughs> game against like Tulane or something like that. He's the real deal. I did, I do enjoy his punting. That that's my single yes. favorite play in college football. Southern Cal is going to be back to old form this year. They really are. Well, they they can legally pay players now, so it's going to be good news for them. <laughs> yeah, they can keep the championship this time. Hey, what, what's your temperature on Tua, Gary? Um, I think the prudent thing is probably to pick up his fifth year option on the off chance he stays healthy next season. Mm-hmm. Um, I think you look at this as a two year opportunity to continue to build around a quarterback at a relatively cheap price tag, someone who did play well last season when healthy. Um, and really that's your path to being a, I don't even want to say elite team necessarily, but if you're, if, if the goal is to win a super bowl, your path to winning a super bowl is Tua stays healthy. He continues to play at the level he played last season when healthy, and you've got enough around him because he's affordable at this point. So I think you maximize the window with him, but I'm not looking to sign him to a massive extension. I think you have to invest seriously at backup in the quarterback position. If your hope is to win a Super Bowl, you have to invest in another quarterback. I mean, they, they did, though. I mean, it, it, it just it, happened that certain, Teddy was no good. It, but at you're a certain right, point, it comes down to who considers themselves to be a backup quarterback. Like They need a quarterback who is like Tua to be the backup. Okay, but if you every quarterback like Tua thinks they're a starter in the NFL, so who's signing with the Dolphins, knowing they're going to be the backup? Yeah, it's a it's a, it's a complicated situation. L- let me give you let me give you the list: Jimmy G, Wentz, Brissett, Mary Mariota, Mariota. I was going to say Mariota. Mariota makes the one. Brissett was already there. They've been through that, so that he's not going to him. Yeah, Mariota makes sense, but Minshew, like, Mike White. You Minshew know what, Minshew, makes sense, makes I've, I've thought about Minshew from time to time. I think he could be a fun backup in Miami. Mike White would be a fun backup. And honestly, so would Jimmy G. But Mike I wouldn't White, want to give up two first-round picks White for Mike sucks. White. You realize this, right? Like, if you invested in Jimmy G as your backup for a year. But Jimmy G, he made it clear last season he does not want to be a backup quarterback yet. This isn't about just are like, people picking up a guy on Madden door? and yeah, telling him to they, sign. Like, are people beating down his door to make but, him their starting listen, quarterback? Listen, if the Colts don't trade for Lamar, Jimmy G is going to be their quarterback. Maybe, maybe yes. the Texans are interested. Maybe so now yeah. you're naming multiple teams where you should be the starter. <laughs> but do you want to be the starter on either of those two teams? Yes, Jimmy G. Wants yes, to be you want to make starters money on the Dolphins. Yes, I think the Dolphins should pay him what you would pay a starter to have him back. If, if that's what you, 
You have to. I don't what? think. I actually don't think. Again, you have it's a not about whether or not like you he have a choice. The money. It's about him accepting the role. He's not going even for sixteen, seventeen million dollars. He's not going to sign. If the to Dolphins sit on the bench, the Dolphins' principal investment needs to be at backup quarterback. If no, they have doesn't. a chance to win. In fact, no, it needs would, to be at offensive line. I would punt backup quarterback because they don't have to. If they're fucked anyway. Exactly. That's no way to think. That's no way to think. That, that's how you because have. Because it's to not think. true. Because it's not true. But again, Tim, if you're constructing the narrative, this is like building a showdown lineup. If you're constructing the narrative where you win a million dollars, everything has to go right. If the Dolphins are going to possibly win a Super Bowl, a lot of things have to break their not, way. Again, and the biggest true. one is two is healthy. That's not true. San Francisco went through three. They're not, not San, San Francisco. Francisco. And got all the way to the NFC Championship game. But three, like abs, the, the idea that if your, your starter gets hurt, you're screwed. Don't worry about backup. Okay. Is such caveman thinking. It's not. Okay, so, so Mahomes misses more than a quarter. And Chad Henney has to play. The kid says he's not winning shit. I what don't are you agree. talking about? What do you mean, what am I talking about? You have a quarterback you can't trust who's going to play, and it's unfortunate. But you, you're not dealing with a regular quarterback. You're dealing with someone who is one hit from missing the rest of the season. Like, you have if, – if you're an incredibly talented team, and the Dolphins have a lot of talented pieces, it is complete malpractice not to invest significant time, attention, and dollars into your backup. There's, I, I really don't know what other choice you have. As you go out and spend it on more positions with more impact players. And then when Tua gets hurt in week three, you okay, lose you work your job. You weren't going to win shit anyway because Tua already you got hurt. You lose your job. I fire you because you don't know how to ma- uh, marshal your resources. I, so I no like GM will do that. I don't know that. Sal- like, if the whole I don't know that is, you understand how a roster you, construction works. Shut up. If you don't understand no. that the whole point is you have cheap quarterback, Let's build a super team around him. But as it turns out, the team's not that good anyway. So you need to go out and get more resources. Like the whole point is Tua needs to take a leap and then the Dolphins might have a chance as Gary has conceded. They probably don't have a chance, even Mm -hmm. if he takes three. I don't agree with any of that. The Dolphins were playing fantastically last season when Tua was there. Then he got hurt and the season was ruined. I don't buy that one bit. I don't buy it. It's not true. It is not reflective of what we saw. But so again, what you're saying is going you into early in, December so, so, so was playing Minshew great. Fifteen million dollars come in, same thing. That Dolphins team was eight and four going to that Niners game. After Tua got hurt, the entire season was ruined because you didn't have a backup. Don't you? No, the tell entire me season was ruined they need, because they lost their starting quarterback. This isn't about what level Believe of backup or not, quarterback you there have. There are some teams that can lose their back, their starting quarterback who actually have a brain and invest in some backup yeah, quarterback. You're right. The San Francisco 49ers, the best roster in the NFL. Which is a quarterback in in, in terms it's of the, the coaching lineage Baltimore they have had. Baltimore did the exact same thing. If oh, Baltimore was winning the games by like with Baltimore, the 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 Cowboys did the exact same thing. If Again, you don't have you, a you backup, just named three of the five best defensive teams in football. The Dolphins and you also have named a, a team defense. that didn't get to the fucking playoffs. Another team that got their starter back and still lost and got pounded. Those teams all made the playoffs. So it's so it's just about making the playoffs. We're talking about winning a Super Bowl. You have a real chance to win the Super Bowl with, with that Tua. Dolphins roster with Tua. But as the Tua may get hurt. Okay, then great. The Jimmy G is not bringing bringing Jacoby Brissett. Well, if they hadn't already had him there, he wouldn't be a terrible idea. Super Bowl. What, they have the talent. Yourself? They almost they had the talent. Let me listen to myself. Are you blind? Did you not watch the games last year? That team could have won the Super Bowl. You, you, Absolutely you, came, could have. you came on this show every week telling us how terrible. Because I they hate were, them. That's why. Because I hate them. Because I want them to lose. Because I don't <laughs> like that team. Because their success is misery for me, and I have to put up with a lot of it when they're successful. But let's call things as they are. That team could absolutely have won the Super Bowl last year. They were every bit as good as yeah. any of those teams in the AFC. Of course, they were. They, I like that you laughed. They, they played no the one at quarterback. And they had this. Buffalo now you're on the ropes. And Dolphins fan is telling you that's not true. Yeah, but he like they, the Bills were on the ropes when the Dolphins were playing. Sure, uh, but the Dolphins like, weren't going to beat Kansas City. They weren't going to beat Cincinnati. And again, yes, if there was even a kernel of a chance that they, they would have done that, it was necessitated on Tua being healthy. Which again is the whole point of this. Like, there's a difference between building a roster for longevity when you play like when you're playing basketball or baseball where the seasons are hundreds of games long and it's just a war of attrition 
football, you need your best roster, specifically at the most important position in sports. If you're running a team and you tell me that the quarterback, the least dependable quarterback in terms of injury is who you're hinging your whole season on, and you're not going to really worry about his backup. That's the hand they've been dealt. Then I That's what it is. leave you of your responsibilities so, well, so, when so, you don't, don't invest get, in a backup. Hold on, shut up. And, and hire somebody plan. who's got... Who does? What, what is your plan here for the Dolphins? I'm either I have drafting, $20 million dollars to give to a quarterback right now to back up to a... Who the fuck are you signing? I'm using a second or third round pick on a quarterback who I think fits the mold that Tua has. And or you're I, signing a quarterback? And... And or I'm signing another quarterback. Uh, that is that. Who? Give me a name. I gave you the list of players. Who are you signing? Probably Minshew, and I'm drafting a quarterback too. I have to. They just did that with Skylar Thompson, who sucked. <laughs> so you take another swing. I, I actually don't so, know. So what not the, only I, are I you do not only are you are advising going to do that. By the way, I actually do I, think I, they I, are. I, going not to only are you advising, they will draft some guy in the third round who probably also sucks to back up to her. Like you have, well, you don't have a first, so you have to use your second round pick probably on a quarterback. I don't no, know. You I, have I see, much I other think choice. In this position, I can, I can guarantee you, they will not be using their second round pick on a quarterback. Uh, I was once guaranteed they'd never use their first round pick on a safety. Then they took a safety. You're talking about Jason Allen? Who are you talking no, about? No, when they took Fitzpatrick, I was told they'd never take a safety. Then they who told you that? A Dolphins friend of ours. Okay. Anyway, Look, I, we, I'll we just say this. this square in terms, of, around, in terms of roster maximization, you're now suggesting they spend more mm-hmm. money on a backup quarterback than probably twice as much money on a backup quarterback and taking up cap space as any other team in the league. A- and then... Drafting. Because without that backup quarterback was the reason they... Fell apart last season. Uh, there's not a reliance backup on backup quarterback football that would have made them any good. That's not again. That's not true. Give me the name. Give me a name. If they had had a competent, give backup me a roster, name. What's so hard about that? Well, I already did. If you were listening, but you're you're too interested in trying to make your point to listen to my. Point. What's the name? I Gar- just said, Gardner Minshew was your name. If they had had Gardner Minshew last year, they would have had a much better chance than because they didn't have a backup. The, the guy that came in for the mean? Eagles and couldn't win a game. He did win a game. Did he? Who did he but beat? The he, first game. He did win one of the games. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Yeah. So he was one and one or one and two with the Eagles? I one believe and one. one and two because he lost to New Orleans and in Dallas. Dallas. Oh, yeah. So the team that went to the Super Bowl that lost one I mean, game my, my, starter, the he thing lost here, three games. I mean, I, you can keep yelling, but just because you raised it from your voice doesn't make your argument I don't see how stronger. any of this makes any sense. When the reason you lost was because your quarterback got hurt, you didn't have a backup. Maybe you should have a backup. Well, I know, you insane. Sign Gardner Minshew, insane. who if Hurts had been out for the year, they would have lost in their first game in the playoffs. In, you know, well, no, they played someone who couldn't play quarterback. I also they, think this is simplifying the situation a little bit. I mean, I first and foremost disagree with the entire premise of this conversation. However, the Dolphins last season did go out and sign one of the most expensive backup yes, quarterbacks they in, did the right in thing. Teddy Bridgewater. And then both times Tua got hurt, Teddy Bridgewater got hurt in the, sa- the next game yes. that he had to start thus creating a situation where a seventh round rookie quarterback had to start a playoff game. Like oh, you're talking about a situation that was that. insanity. I agree completely. And it didn't work out, but the logic behind bringing Teddy and spending a lot of money was exactly the right one. It just didn't work out because of the circumstances, but it was the right move. It was the only move you can make. And even more so now the two has got additional concussions. But again, if it's you're the- advocate, if you're advocating for them doing that same thing again, they're going to, and it wouldn't have mattered because even if Teddy had stayed healthy, maybe they win one more game in the regular season. Maybe he beats the Bills on that specific day where the Bills just completely shit the bed. I don't know. You got Tyreek Hill, and you've got uh, you know you've got yeah, great, fantastic great weapons. receivers, great and weapons, better receivers than the bank, as good of receivers as the Bengals, better players. Teddy Bridgewater does not beat Joe Burrow. What are you in one in one about? game? In one game. Joe Burrow's team loses five okay, games. Okay, even here. if he wins that game, then they've got to play. The then they've got to play Patrick Mahomes. Then they've got to play the Eagles. Like I don't understand you're what right. your it's argument true. is here. All Pat and I are saying is, if your starting quarterback gets hurt, you're fucked. That's a general consensus statement of the NFL. If you build any GM who builds their team that way is fired that season if they don't have a backup. Well, they're not, since most teams in the NFL are built that way. How many no. starting quarterbacks do you so think Pat, exist? So Patrick 64? Mahomes gets hurt when one next year. And Patrick Mahomes go, is not an injury risk in the way that Tua is the most injury risk. Again, yeah, that's the Dolphins not a aren't fair way to good. construct it. The Dolphins, Dolphins only ex- path Dolphins to being are very good, good is if Tua is good. <laughs> I don't I don't agree with that. I really don't. Because Tua was not amazing last year. Tua was very Look, good. Tua wasn't... Tua, Tua was kind of amazing. Tua was year. very good. 
and he the led fact, the league in almost every statistical category, a quarterback and lead the league in terms of efficiency. The, it helps when you have the best receiver in football. It sure. Helps. Like I, I don't even know what we're arguing anymore. Is if that the Dolphins he, don't spend money saying, on a backup like last year? Marcus Mariota in at quarterback for the Dolphins, they would be a playoff team. They need to invest in a backup, the and they and they are more importantly, to my point, they are going to invest again in a backup because they have to. Sure, they'll sign another Teddy Bridgewater type to a six million dollar one year deal. Good. I hope they do. It's a, that should be their priority. You just okay. told the, you started this off when I I got mad about it was you said pay starter money to a backup quarterback was your quote for a one year deal if if it's starter money then so be it I kind of don't care because that this team could win the Super sense. Bowl this team has enough talent to win a Super Bowl <laughs> not if you're putting twenty million dollars into your backup quarterback you're not you don't it had that money last year didn't spend all its cap. Okay, and then who who give me the name again of the quarterback? That's not my job to do your research for you. Well, you said Gardner Minshew, and that, that was false. So who else? No, Gardner Minshew would be a fine answer. Gardner Minshew is a what, good backup. What, what would your confidence level be with the uh, Gardner Minshew led Miami Dolphins? I mean, higher than Skylar Thompson. If we're using, <laughs> you know, Zach Wilson as a barometer, I guess I can use that as a barometer. That team has enough talent to beat anybody with just confident Look, quarterback play. I'm not disagreeing that I think the Dolphins have a lot of talent. I, I actually think their defense has a lot of individual talent yeah, that did not reach. Reeks. Exactly, which was terrible last season. So, you know, maybe, look, they spent a lot of money on defensive coordinator. I don't know. I don't know if that's going to, sure if, if, if that's going to change your tune, but there's, there's some area of improvement here. But again, the, the, the thesis statement will always be if two was hurt, they're screwed. But Tua is probably going to be hurt. Well, so do you that, go into the season then it's just tough presuming that that's the screwed? hand you've been dealt. But this, you, if you, you have if you to honestly believe the that, hand. then you should you should trade Tyreek Hill. You should trade away your best players because you're probably not going to have no. It. Because again, if there's a two percent chance that Tua stays healthy and that they can make the Super Bowl, you play the season out to see if that two percent chance can come to fruition. But I'm telling you right now, if Tua gets hurt, it doesn't matter who their backup is. There's a zero percent chance they're winning the Super Bowl. Well, I I don't I well I agree with your first point. I do not agree with that second. Point. Well, who are the if the Jets trade for Rodgers, who are they signing as their backup so they can ensure that they still win the Super Bowl? Well, they can't. They're they're gambling a whole year on one season, and if it doesn't work out, people are going to lose their jobs. I don't think there's any any safety net. People were going like if this doesn't work out, Joe Douglas has to go. He will have misfired on multiple quarterbacks. You don't get to survive that. Like if the if they bring in Rodgers and it doesn't work out, like if it doesn't work out in that way, you realize then they, that if then the Tua coach and GM are out, all gone. If Tua flames out, everyone in Miami is also fired, right? No, because I was gonna say, the is your, is your whole argument being is your whole argument focused on Chris Greer keeping his job? I'm thinking like or if just you're the GM, what's best how do for the GMs Dolphins? act? Well, but GMs act both in what's their interest and the team's interest. You've got to think logically. I know, you're but I'm saying your you arguments do. seem to be more Chris Greer centric. My than argument is a, is a realistic one. Like, if, if what what if you're in that chair? What is it that you need to do? If you're that person, what do you do? That's the only way you can look at it. You have to live in the real world. Then you go out and sign as as many offensive linemen and defensive linemen. Well, that is not what is going. That is not what they are going to do. Look, I, I I think there's a very reasonable chance that they sign a notable backup quarterback and pay him six to seven million dollars. Or no, which again is not a revolutionary idea. I it's what they've done the past the two seasons. With the quarterback market, I think they'll end up having to pay a little bit more than that. Well, Tim's ad, Tim's advocating paying twenty five million for a backup quarterback. I don't think they're going to have to pay twenty five. Well, you said but starter I think money. What pay... starter money in the NFL? I don't know what starter money on the low we end. Do, is yes, we be. we know exactly what starter know. money is now because Geno Smith and and uh, Derek Gino's Carr good. are starter level quarterbacks. And so is they Ryan are, Tannehill. They are your replacement level starting quarterback. So the going rate for a starting quarterback is twenty five million dollars. I don't think that anyone's going to pay some of those backups you mentioned that kind of money. And I would suspect level. they don't. I agree with you. <laughs> But, you know, you go after the best one that you can get your hands on. But you're right. The Dolphins should definitely be the first one knocking on the door, putting that $24 million check down just so they can set the barometer of this market and make sure they get there. So, so I didn't say that. You said no pay them starter money. What, what were we supposed I to said do? it's an investment. I said you need to invest in a serious way. In a so now you're saying something different. No, no. And I think you have to pay like low end starter money to do it. But again, Probably. so you've also said, though, that like when I brought up they paid Teddy Bridgewater $6 million last season, you were like, 
Yeah, that's exactly what they have to do. So basically what you're advocating for is do the same thing the GM has done each go of the after past a two Teddy seasons, Bridgewater and you're presenting level, it like it's a revolutionary idea. Go after a Teddy Bridgewater level quarterback or what you believed he was going to be. Yeah, I, I honestly don't know that you can do anything else. So again, your your big idea here is the Dolphins should sign. Teddy the Dolphins should do the exact same thing they did last year. Yes, because it hopefully and hopefully for their sake it works. It should, it, it, it just... It sucked for them that it didn't work. It was unfair to their, them and their fans. I'm being magnanimous here. Like that's a team with a ton of talent that was exciting. That because of an injury to a quarterback, who unfortunately gets injured a lot, the entire season went up in smoke when they had the ability to win a Super Bowl. That really is unfortunate. But the, that's the whole, not a good way to build a franchise. That's a, that when you know now a, even more than you did before, given that he had three, two or three concussions last year. Even more. You're just saying that's not a good way to build a franchise, but you're advocating for them to do the exact same thing they just did no, last I'm season. Talking about. It sucks when the backup, you can't trust the backup. And There's no that backup that's going to come in that you're ever going to yeah. trust. The best you can do at backup quarterback, especially right now, is have a guy who can look competent for three games until your guy can come back. That's all Cooper Rush was. Yeah. Or you draft somebody. Well, again, yeah, that's, that's the ideal scenario is you draft someone in the fourth or fifth round and, and you you happen to draft Tony Romo. <laughs> And yeah, you wow, you've managed to find a very cheap starting cal- caliber quarterback, but that's very unlikely to happen. I know. Anyway, we, we've talked about this too long. My my general point, and I think it I, I think it's very defensible, is that with a quarterback who you cannot trust, you really it's really hard to make a case that you got to hinge the whole season on somebody playing the whole year when it's just so darn unlikely. I think that's a very very bitter pill to ask people to swallow. But that's your that's, that's my only point. But that is your out of being good. If you think this is a, a true Super Bowl caliber team, it all hinges on Tua. It no, can't hinge on Jacoby Brissett. It can't hinge on a player who's unlikely to play the whole season. It just can't. But that that's the out. You, There's you no way around that. Inside straight. I, I, I don't. With this I roster don't that you've constructed. Well, we, we then we just disagree. I actually don't think that there's just no option. I, I think you have to get creative. Like the only option where it would work out anything differently is actually what you guys just said. You draft a fourth round quarterback and he turns out to be amazing. That's it. That's your I think they'll have to draft earlier than that, but well, they don't have a first round pick. No, they don't they because they have pick, to be honest because they have, Bra- they have Bradley Chubb. Well, I mean, Bradley Chubb is a good player to have on your team, but they still need more defensive talent and you can't go wasting a second round pick when you have no first round. Not pick. having Byron Jones anymore helps. Like having his salary off the off the cap and everything. I, I would say so. If yes. You just double down. You can give Mariota thirty five million dollars to back up now. I mean, I'm right. I mean, I, I don't think anybody disputes that I'm right about the. Again, I don't think. I don't think. Like, I don't think anyone laugh disputes sneer, that you're right. You, you wish, at me, you but wish I am you had right. Aaron Rodgers backing up Patrick Mahomes in an ideal. Me, but there's but a guy I am you right. can go get. Trade your second round pick for Aaron Rodgers. He can there back up to us. You're going to be there very frustrated when the Jets get Aaron Rodgers for a conditional second round pick. I mean, I'll be wrong about that. I think he ends up going for more than that. I think he goes for a first round pick, but I think there are more teams out there looking at him. If it, if it truly is a one year thing, a lot of teams that could use a one. Well, we'll know pick. that though in advance because the Packers have to allow those teams to talk to him. Yeah, but we still have another, what, seven days for this to play out? You're right. So, I mean, that's, that is a lot of time, but it's also not. But as we stand here, we have, they haven't granted permission to any other team. And for the purposes of this show, I am looking very much forward to Aaron Rodgers being the quarterback of the Jets. And I, you know, I, yeah, I, mean, I think I'm making it very clear. I am going to pick the Dolphins to go very deep next year. I like. You just this said Dolphins. that if they, you just said if because the I'm going to gamble get on Aaron Rodgers, they have a 51 percent chance of winning the Super Bowl. That and you just said Dolphins it was impossible can't... for Tua to play all of his games. Well, I think they're going to sign someone who's a decent backup. But obviously, I'm, and particularly because <gasps> I don't. There's all kinds of good people out there. You keep shaking your hands as if I, I, none of these you, people are the any good. The best name you if have you, given me is Gardner Minshew, who fucking sucks. He, again, if you think that, you don't know what you're talking about. You don't know ball, man. Like to say he quote sucks where, where, is so dumb. It is so it, like it. It's so dumb. Why I don't do you know where think to begin with. He is it. good. Well, what has he shown you that he's very good? I mean, he is good. Okay, here's <laughs> maybe maybe he's this not great. Good. Maybe this will clear things up. Maybe this will give us a better understanding of what exactly you're thinking. XFL quality. Tim, how many rosters as currently constructed could win the Super Bowl, in your opinion, if Gardner Minshew was their starting quarterback? Two or three. And the Dolphins Dolphins are one of those teams. Yeah, I think so. 
What? Are, get the fuck out because of, of the wep- because of the weapons. Yeah, you get replacement level quarterback play with those receivers. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think it's even debatable. I mean, do the Dolphins I mean, have better weapons than the Eagles do? Yes. Do they? I would take what Miami has over what the Eagles have. I would, I would think, take the best. I think they might have better football. weapons, but I don't think they have better defense. Well, their their offensive line is not a weapon in the same way. Obviously, their Isn't line it? is really. Better. Yeah, I'm thinking. I'd about say skill. keeping a quarterback but, safe is a is a pretty I'm good weapon. Skill, no, not really. I'm talking about skill position player. Obviously, the, the there line are other separate. factors uh, to a game. Line, so offensive line doesn't matter. Okay, that's good to know. Offensive line is a wholly season. separate subject. Like when people talk about offensive weapons, they're talking about skill position players. Let's let's you know. You're talking about winning the Super Bowl. Skill position players don't win the Super Bowl. We just literally saw the Chiefs offensive line win them a Super Bowl. It just happened. I don't know that that's necessarily true, but anyway, they certainly helped. They didn't cost them the Super Bowl the way they did two years ago. I'll give you that. And I would say that the the Eagles are actually a very good 1v1 with the Dolphins for this because their skill position players are also excellent. And they Mm -hmm. have a tight end who can actually do something as well instead of just jump five feet in the air and make a catch every two games like Gasicki seems to. Well, I think Gasicki's on his way out, isn't he? I, mean, Gary I certainly think so, based on his usage last year. Yeah. But you also have, so let's say that they're comparable, maybe a slight advantage to the Dolphins at wide receiver in particular. The offensive line for the Eagles is fantastic. Mm-hmm. And Minshew got to stand behind that and throw. What's going to happen to him when he has to stand behind the Miami offensive line? Oh, it's going to be like when he played for Jacksonville and was no good. I mean, he was good enough. He obviously, he wasn't great, but that team had a lot of problems. Yeah, he was good enough that they had the number one pick. Yeah, I mean, th- that team had a lot of problems. He was the he was the least of their problems. It's almost no, like think... a single player can't dictate the success of a team. Which is weird because you think they can. Which was the precise I think argument a quarterback that has you laid. the most impact. So yes. a single player can dictate the team. I think a, the, a great I think quarterback, quarterback position has the most impact. Yes. And when I think it's when anyway, a quarterback is playing at a... I think we've exhausted ourselves on this to- this topic. I'm curious to see who the people... I mean, I'm not curious about it. I know the people are going to side with us, Gary. But I want to hear from the people on this. Maybe we're dead wrong and Tim is dead right. I mean, again, if his opinion is you should have the best backup quarterback money can buy and that quarterback should be at a starter's level, I would agree. But wouldn't every team that would want be that? Great. You no, because not so, every team but has the Dolphins quarter... have the inside track here. No, no, no not every team would, because not every team's quarterback is equally as likely to miss significant stretches. Like, let's be honest, right? Like Baltimore is a team with Lamar that needs a really good backup. And they have a Pro Bowl backup. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, well, that's that's a whole other issue. But he's Can the Dolphins but, get but, Bailey but, Zappy? But but Huntley is like, I like Huntley. I Huntley like Huntley is legitimately like a top five backup. I think at the you I put think him if the, on the Dolphins, the Dolphins would be terrible. If you put Huntley on San Francisco, they would have won the Super Bowl. I don't know about that. I do believe that. I do believe that. I do believe he's better than than Brock Purdy. I mean, if 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 San Francisco had literally any person on their 53-man roster who could throw a pass in the NFC Championship game, mm-hmm. they might have won a Super Bowl. I agree. But again, eh, I mean, you're I talking think, about... they were beating the Eagles. Probably not, but... I think they were. It was, it was a pick them. You're talking about were. the best roster... Once you remove quarterbacks from the equation, San Francisco has easily the best roster of any team in football, and it's not particularly close. No, so again, you're right. But I like the Dolphins roster, and I like the defensive coordinator they brought in, and I like the pieces they have, and I'm have more. And you hate the their head coach, you... by the way. You think he's terrible? I think he is really smart in some ways, and I think he has a lot to learn in other ways. I mean, look, fine. you know what? I'll just say like, that I appreciate your I appreciate your your Dolphins fandom. Um, not fandom. It's no, like no, our, it's a I, I, I think it's pretty clear the way you're there. leaning. I think the team's growing on you. It's and, look, uh, I think the Bills are going to be so bad this year that there have to be okay, wins well, around, is. right? There, there have to is. be wins to go around. There it is. Like that team didn't look good for two months last year. Paul will tell you the same thing. Ever since that Thanksgiving, they didn't have a good game. You mean when their quarterback got hurt? And then they no showed in a playoff game. But you know. Other than that, pretty good team, though. But yeah, Mar- Mariota and the Dolphins are going to the Super Bowl. I don't. Th- I didn't say that. I didn't say that. The, the Bills are terrible. There's free wins to go around. No, just a somebody has quarterback to... will lead the Dolphins to the promised land. Some every year, a team that had a lot of wins in the AFC moves backwards, and I think Buffalo will probably be that team. They're the likeliest candidate of the candidates. I, mean, I would probably way. say 
the Dolphins are probably that team. Yeah, the Dolphins blew up. I'm talking about a team that won 12 games and like plus. Like last year it was the Titans. Two years Looks ago, like it could it be the, the Ravens if we're being honest with ourselves. Ravens won what nine games? Did the Ravens games? make the playoffs? Yeah, yeah they, they lost to the games. Steelers. Oh, on the flip play, that's right. On the flip, yeah. did they win eleven? I thought they may have been ten and seven. They just kept right. winning the dumbest games possible. But they also the lost the dumbest games possible. They played a lot of dumb games because every game Snoop started. Every game without Lamar Jackson <laughs> finished thirteen to nine. Yeah, that's true. The Ravens should just pay Lamar. I would agree. But clearly they don't want. I think there's I, I all, there must be other stuff really going should, on there. Though. There must be other stuff going on there. Well, maybe they and were we like, just don't want them there. We we can sign Gardner Minshew for a fraction. No, but I think that I think there's like there's obviously like personnel reasons that like they're like you know we don't need him in here. Great if he stays, but we're cool if he doesn't. Sort of thing. I mean, they might. If not you just some... sign all the quarterbacks and then no one else has. They're not any enamored. They're not enamored. They're not enamored with. Or, like, there's obviously some friction going on. Well, he didn't show up to the playoff game, did he? That was a real red flag. Now, I don't know why that happened, and I'm not going to pretend to know why, but that's a red flag. That I does mean, Tua, seem Tua also wasn't at the Dolphins' playoff game. Yeah, because that's he had the dizzies. Very, that's a very different circumstance. I'm I'm just saying it. Like, it happens. I mean, when DeMar Hamlin wasn't even at the Bills' home playoff game. <laughs> According to some people. <laughs> Someone did tell me that the reason <clears throat> that uh, Aaron Rodgers is insistent that he goes to the Jets is because he can study chemtrails more. <laughs> I am not looking forward to being required to listen to McAfee show every single you, week. You don't have but to. He, yeah, <laughs> once he becomes the Jets quarterback, I won't have a choice. I'm going to have to listen to whatever the hell Look, he's man. talking about, and I got to be in the weeds, and I'm not looking forward to that part of it. I'm telling you as someone who, like, 90% of my job is just looking at Twitter to see if news breaks. The beats will tweet out anything relevant from those conversations and they'll do it a lot. You don't have to listen to the whole thing. You may be right, but I have an obsessive personality and we'll have to at least go through a few weeks of it before I decide that the, the clips on Twitter are enough. Well, what, what what happens when Brett Favre wins his defamation lawsuit against Pat McAfee and then just wipes that, then they're broke and don't have a show. Where's Aaron Rodgers going to go then? His ultimate act of revenge on Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> he, he can come here. He can be on the team every week. It's, it's just such a perfect bookend for, you know, Rodgers to come to the Jets too. Like, it's, 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 everything is just, you know, history is, as Marx used to say, history uh, repeats itself. The first time is tragedy. The second is farce, which kind of concerns me, but. Well, it was fun to get together with you guys. It was a good old school yelling match. Yeah, I haven't really been thinking a lot about football, if I'm being perfectly honest, outside of like when we're going to do a show and I do a little prep for it. Because like I've enjoyed, as much as I love football, I also have enjoyed the last few Sundays that I haven't to think about football. and able to You can watch stuff. live. Look, Tucson is next weekend. I'm not going to lie to you if I didn't tell you I'm more interested in what's going on in Tucson than whatever the heck they're doing next week. Well... You were watching college basketball. We're doing a college basketball show on Sunday. I evening. have been watching a little college basketball. Try to get up to speed to have something to say. Is well, is Duke even making the tourney? I've, I've heard they're bad this year. They're well, no, well, yes, they are. I, it, like bracketologists have them as a seven or eight seed, so I guess I think they're going to get in. Whereas North Carolina went all the way to the championship game last year and blew that big lead. I think they're out. So, well, Gary, have you been watching the World Baseball Classic? Uh, there's only been. A couple games so far. I have. I, Is it I have in Japan? The baseball Classic. Uh, the games in Japan haven't started yet. I believe the games in Taiwan started. Like, is it all in Asia? Like, is that who's hosting it? Or no, it... so th each pool is in a different location. So the oh, okay. America's pools are in Arizona and Miami. Fair enough. I thought it was all in one site. I did not know that. Do good. people care about that? Like, I assume like not like... here, but they really do in the Dominican Republic in Japan. Okay, um, fair enough. So, and like I, the, I would the say, World like, Junior Hockey Championships to them. I, I apparently we found out today that uh, the Mexico USA game in Arizona like sold out immediately. Like, I think there's just kind of a built-in rivalry there. Like, and like ni 98 percent Mexican fans are there, most likely. But look, hey, every American stud, like pitchers, are never going to be at this thing because that's just what's mm -hmm. going to happen but every great american baseball player is playing for team usa it's it's if it's ever going to be like catching on this is the year it'll catch on it's not going to catch on i know but i'm just i'm just saying 
How many teams are in this? 20. That's too 20. many. There's, there's like four countries that are good at baseball. Yeah. Just you don't want to watch. You don't want to watch a bunch of guys from New Jersey suit up for Israel. I mean, there's the, there, there's that, or you can have like all the guys from the Curacao Dutch team that have like yeah, yeah, yep. Is Sydney yeah, Ponson they... still playing? I do like. No, no, I, I saw no. you tweet at me. Suspedis is playing for Cuba still. Yeah. How old is that guy? I believe he's forty or forty. He had a fake age when he came in. I was gonna say he's yeah. forty one with a massive asterisk. He was. I was thirty three trying... when Oakland signed him. <laughs> I was trying so hard to find that video of you teaching people how to pronounce his name. Oh, I have it. I have it on my computer. I was do, there do you have live. it? Okay. I was Yoannis there live. Suspedis. Day, I was there live the day he was trying to do the recording of Ioannis Suspedis, and it went through multiple takes. <laughs> yeah, that was around It was around March Madness? That would be right. I used to come into the city for yeah. March Madness. So was that, that the day you got right. lost going to McDonald's? Yes. That's yeah. the very same day, yes. It was yeah. like right there. <laughs> Well, Stay you know, right I didn't. Yeah, whatever. All right. Well, that will do it. On the Pat Mayo Experience, Gary and Thorne, thank you for being here. Tim Andergus. Tim Andergus. It's not my name. Thank you for being here as well. Rate and review the podcast. Smash the like. We got more content coming for you over the weekend. Cut Sweat Live, March Madness Bracket, back to golf with the Valspar next week, and then free agent signings, schedule releases. This NFL stuff just doesn't stop. So stick with us. All right. Sub to the channel where you're here as well. We just passed 40,000 subs. So thank you all for doing that now the rest of you haven't do it too okay thanks i'm pat mayo we'll see you next time experience experience